Uh, on the Friday before Martin Luther King Day weekend every year at the Episcopal School, we celebrate a Holy Eucharist in honor of Dr. King. And this year, our guest preacher was Father Jim Anderson from St. Luke's Episcopal Church. And he told this story about an eighth grade girl in confirmation class. Perhaps she's not all that unlike many eighth graders in confirmation class. She was dozing off during class, and the, the class was being held inside the sanctuary of that church, and the teacher naturally was a bit aggravated and decided to call her out by name and use the Socratic method. Sally, Sally, tell us, what exactly is a saint? Startled, <laughs> a bit hazy. She kind of looked up and opened her eyes and cast her gaze around the church and upon one of the stained glass windows. And after a few seconds, she pointed up to the windows and said, Saints are the ones who let the light shine through. Saints are the people who let the light shine through. And not just the people we read about in history, but think about that hymn. The saints of God are just folk like me, and I mean to be one too. So do we notice when the light is shining on us? Do we notice it so that it can shine through us? You know, epiphanies don't have to be grand and dramatic like Samuel, hearing an audible voice of God. I certainly have never experienced anything like that. But what seems far more useful for me about epiphanies is to think of common people doing common things and yet knowing that there's something deeper going on, something bigger. When we look at it like that, we start thinking of that song lyric on the cover of our bulletin. Sign, sign, everywhere a sign. Remember that song? By the five-man electrical band. Now that I've been in the church for eight years, I have begun to realize that we newbies might be experiencing the liturgy with a bit more excitement and enthusiasm than some of those who have been hearing it every Sunday for their whole lives. And so for a while now, I've been thinking about ways to help people hear it with new ears. You know, ads are designed to have that effect because advertisers... They live and they die by crafting a sticky message that compels us, that motivates us to action. Think about that for a second. Because isn't that exactly how the church lives and dies? By crafting a message that speaks to the world? So, to have a little fun, I decided to help us hear our own church service in a fresh and exciting way. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Sometimes we need a fresh look at the same old church words. They are epiphanies, and we can't allow these things to escape us. We need our language and our theology to be living so we can live by it. We need it to be animated so it can animate us. It's been 51 years since the Civil Rights Act, but somehow it feels like we are back in 1964 all over again. Clearly, Dr. King's dream has not been manifested to the fullest. Clearly, we need to keep the dream alive. And clearly, to me, the world needs the body of Christ. 
Dr. King was killed on the Friday before Holy Week, and a young preacher in Essex, England, knew his congregation had been deeply impacted and affected by this, and that he would need to address the topic in his Sunday sermon for Easter. And so he wrote that sermon, and then he went to pick out hymns, and flipping through the hymnal, he felt that there were no hymns that voiced resurrection hope as a resilient and combative response to contemporary evil and tragedy. And so in haste, he sat down and wrote the hymn we are about to sing, Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing. As we sing it, I hope we might sing with great faith and with hope for our world in these times we live in. It is in the presence and power of Jesus through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit shining as a light in us that we are the resurrection and we are the dream. Let it be.